Right guys, so we've got our triple trimmer in here. We've also got the welders coming today and they are gonna get this all sorted out for us. Mr. Fabulous Pete doing, is right? getting on with it. Next step, get the uh, shuttering done and then fill up the grout. Good morning guys. Right, so I have been away for a couple of days doing various bits and bobs, so unfortunately I haven't been filming. But while I've been away, the guys have been very, very busy. So we've got all these needles out from here now, and we've just got this delicious opening, which is absolutely amazing, love that. So the brick is today, Alex and Ian are gonna be getting on in there as well, getting the rest of that brick up so we can take those needles out and get rid of the other ones in there because this is a bit of a spaghetti junction in here and it's an absolute nightmare. So they're gonna have a lot of fun, first of all, getting in between all these to do all the blocking up. But once that's done, we can drop all these out of the way. We've also got the welders coming today. So I've mentioned about these steels that they need to be welded. So they are all gonna be welded up. They're gonna be welding this junction here and also this junction up in here. So you can see we've got this plate in here, which goes into there. The structure engineer wanted this plate welded into the webbing of the steel rather than the plate going on here and then being bolted through the webbing of the steel like we'd normally do. It allows it to flex basically. So that is that is what he wanted was that in there. So that needs to be welded as well. Also what we need to do is cut a channel in this foot in here today because basically our drainage is going to come through. We've got our bathroom going in there, We've got our kitchen going in there. The kit has been decided now. The kitchen is going to be in the basement, which I'm happy about. I think it's a good decision. So this will be the kitchen down here, kitchen dining area. Because we put our step footing in, the drainage coming from this side of the house is gonna be able to just run straight across this. We may need to do a small channel with nothing too major. But over here, we are gonna to have to do a slightly deeper channel. We're gonna have an inspection chamber out here, an inspection chamber out here. And then uh, basically the drainage is under there. I'm sure you, I'm sure you remember the lovely uh, poo pipe. Victorian poo pipe which went through there. So we're gonna basically join on. It's around here somewhere. So inspection chamber from there and there will both come in into a junction there and go straight through. But that does mean, like I say, because of our invert, I'm gonna to have to cut a channel in this footing across here, which is no massive problem. We did know that was gonna happen in the first place. It wasn't like a mistake or anything. We knew that's gonna be the case, but obviously it's easy to just get it all poured rather than putting shutter in everywhere. Plus we already had this bit of shutter in for this step foot in, so we didn't want to do any additional stuff. Because it's more things to fail. I mean, you're working with a lot of cubic meters of concrete. The last thing you want is a failure because it can be very expensive and very annoying. If you remember, there was a room here. Well, there still is a room here and a room there. And there was a wall which was in here. This was going to be a bedroom. This is now going to be the kitchen diner. We've taken this wall out. So what that does mean is We've basically decided to change all these timbers because what we were going to do is put a steel in here, raise that up into the ceiling and lose the steel in the ceiling and the same over there to get rid of that wooden beam, lose that as well. I've proposed this to the structural engineer so hopefully we're going to be able to do this. We're going to put a steel across there and then there's going to be a steel which runs from this point here right the way across and bolts into that steel. And then we're going to bulk these up with 7x3 timbers, new ones, so they'll just span basically into the webbing of the steel straight across into the webbing of that steel over there and then be pocketed into this wall here. So that will just basically provide a much more stable floor and it will just free up this ceiling space totally, get rid of all this because we don't want this hanging down because we're already a little bit limited for space on the ceilings. Right, going through into here, we've got all this all sorted, we've now got to make some holes as well because our drainage is going to come through from outside and out the back because we do have the rainwater from the roof and also if you can see out there our light well all that water that's coming from there is going to have to come through the house and out the back as well so what we are going to do is come through here with the pipe through this nib here through to here and then we're going to basically remove some of this brickwork lintel across and then bring our pipe right the way through and through this wall here which will bring it through in that corner there, over there, out of the way, and we can then drop it down and then connect everything in here. So there's gonna be a shower there, bath there, toilet in there, basin on this wall here, and then all that will then go through and out into the manhole out there. So yeah, that's it. There's been a lot going on, which is always good. I'm gonna crack on. The lads are cracking on already, so let's do it.
Right then guys, exciting times. The guys are here from RW Fabrication and Welding and they are gonna get this all sorted out for us. So they've done all the prep work now. Gonna be using Art Welder for this, Rich, yeah? Yes, mate. Yes, mate, love it. So a bit of stick welding, get this all nice and safe for us and then we can carry on, get all these needles out and get things rocking. Do it. Right then guys, so the welders are all done. So we are able to now remove more and more of these needles, which is brilliant. The guys are just getting this last bit of brickwork done. You can see where they've done all their welds. Everything's been painted back up with red oxide as well to prevent any rust in the future. And that also means that we can get our grout in here. So Mr. Fabulous Pete doing, is mate? getting on with it. What are you doing here, mate? So basically, I'm uh, just forming some shuttering to put the Weber non-shrinking compound grout underneath it. This grout, it's uh, a non-shrinking compound because obviously we've got this void underneath the uh, steel. It's just sat on threaded bar, which has been resin thick, as you saw earlier on in the video. So all we're doing now is we're just mixing the grout up. So the grout that goes underneath basically forms an additional plate, doesn't it? So we've got it on our nuts underneath, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, so that is holding it up nicely. We haven't yeah. just put it on threaded bar. No, 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 you've got, if you if you look underneath, you can see uh, that it's uh, on these uh, M16 nuts, which are just holding everything in position. And then, like I say, next step, get the uh, shuttering done and then fill up the grout. Wicked. Let's do it. Right then, so Pete's done all the prep work. He's got this all looking beautiful. So according to this product which we're using, it's a Weber Precision Grout. All we need to do is basically wet the surface on which it's gonna be. So you don't need to put any primer or anything down like that. You just literally need to wet the concrete. Make sure there's no standing water in there. It's just basically wet concrete, which obviously prevents any suction. Mix it, that bag, five liters of water, and then we can pour it straight into there, which will be lovely. Let's do it. So just by using the hammer there and tapping that, all that's doing is basically vibrating the whole area, making sure that all this grout goes underneath and releases any air bubbles. You can see there's a few bubbles that have popped. Just make sure that there's more. <laughs> just make sure that any air that is trapped under there escapes easily. We've come right up to the top of the plate, so that is absolutely perfect now. So once this has all gone off, we can remove this bit of shutter in and then that will be nice and solid around that and that will make sure then those fixings will never move underneath and that this will never adjust at all. Beautiful, beautiful job, Pete. Excellent. Right, guys, it's been a manic morning, but we've got lots done. We've been basically trying to clear the site, get as much stuff out of here as possible, because we've got a load of bricks coming soon. We're gonna start on the brickwork, so we need to try and just clear the decks a little bit, because you know how it is with the site. It can quite easily get very congested, with a lot of materials and tools. So basically, as we don't need them, we like to just try and get rid of them back to our storage area so that it's all as tidy and as streamlined as possible because the last thing you want to be doing is tripping over stuff. Yesterday then, we got this dug here, which I showed you a little time lapse of, which is basically for our drainage. Also got this one here done as well. Obviously because this is a step foot in, that is actually lower anyway than that one, so we didn't need to take much out for this, which was good. The uh, joists in here have all been reinforced just to make sure that they're all good. We've just got one more to go in there. Peter's just in here doing the last bit of underpinning that needs to be done. So there's a little bit there and just a little bit over there as well. Once that's done then we can get all that concreted and get that rebricked up. Then we can get on with drilling our hole through for our pipe that I've mentioned before. And then I'm just about to start out on here. So obviously we need to reinstate this floor because if you remember that is actually a floor across here. And what we're gonna do is basically this trimmer here, the edge of the stairs, we're gonna move that over hundred mil. So we've got plenty of room to get your hand down the back of the rail if we decide to put a handrail on this side. The chances are we're probably gonna put it on this side anyway. But just by moving that over, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. We were gonna put a double in here, but we can't get hold of any seven by three timber. So we're gonna put a triple in instead across there of seven by two, which obviously adds up to the same amount. So it'll be three timbers running across there and then another two in here as well and then we'll just trim straight across from this steel into this trimmer across there so that will be a floor reinstated again 
this staircase is going I'm trying to keep hold of it till the last possible minute because otherwise we're going to be using ladders but it will be going soon and then we're just going to have to obviously reinstate all this area here this bit of floor here another trimmer across there while well, it'll be a double here to carry the top of the stairs that's today's job let's get on with it Right then guys, so we have removed all this timber that was across here now, that's all out of the way nicely. And what I've done is I've set the laser up here, you can see that up there, which is basically casting a line across the bottom of this joist here. So I know that this is my dating point that I need to go to, to make sure this floor that I'm about to install here, runs in line with this floor that's existing. So we can see when we come up to here, on my finger, that it's actually just above this steel. So what I'm gonna need to do is just put some packing in here to raise these joists up. <laughs> just, to, just to raise these joists up slightly in the webbing of this steel, just to make sure that everything's level. So when these timbers run from this steel into this trimmer, yeah, these will be bang on. As long as I get this one level across here and make sure that this that comes down here sits in here at the right height, I can then bring these straight from this, from the inside of this web, straight across to that and they'll be flush on the bottom and I know that these will all be bang on level because I know this steel is bang on level and then my trimmer will be bang on level, which means the floor is bang on level, which is good. Right, let's do it. Right then guys, so we've got a triple trimmer in here. So like I mentioned earlier, we were gonna use seven by threes, but there was none in stock. So we got seven by twos and just put a triple in because that is the same width of timber then. They are nicely pocketed in on that side. I've had to put some ply in to pack everything up. So that spans across the full width of the flange of that steel. So that is nice and safe and secure. What Pete rightly pointed out was that these timbers are ever so slightly smaller than the existing ones. So we could have gone for eight inch timbers and ripped it down, but would have been a massive waste, to be honest. Uh, a whole inch of waste. What I have done is basically raise them up to the top of those joists. So these joists run in line with those joists at the top, so that won't affect our floor whatsoever. We can just run our floor straight through, no problems whatsoever. It just means that down here, there is gonna have to be a little bit of packing out. We've got to pack these ceilings out anyway to do the steel makeup. Uh, because of the depth of the steel required, we are gonna have to make up a bit on the bottom to obviously bring our ceiling through and lose this in the ceiling so i'm not worried about that at all it's just a little bit of extra packing which is not the end of the world all we need to do now is just get this bolted together so that's just one solid piece and then we can start getting these other little joists across here and into there pete is finishing here as well doing this bit of underpinning which is awesome so that will go off tonight and then tomorrow that can all be bricked up and then this can be made safe again you can see it's all propped up this is corbelled in nicely so everything's supported and that is supporting everything there and once that's done this one can be dug out here as well tomorrow uh, and then again that can all be bricked up and then that is all of the underpinning done for now there may be depending on what the structural engineer says a little bit to go here and a little bit to go here to carry this steel um, because obviously we're just on clay, but we'll see what he says. Hopefully he's like, yeah, that's fine, carry on. That'd be nice, wouldn't it, Pete? It would be beautiful, but we'll end up underpinning it. I know we will. Right, guys, that's it. That's the end of another episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, do the usual. Like it, comment, subscribe. You know, we're nearly at 100K now. We need your help to get there. Also, if you are in the trade and you're not yet registered with True Trade, head over to truetrade.co.uk. There is literally a huge amount of tools on there which can help your business, one, become more streamlined, which two, will ultimately save you time and money and effort and give you more time to enjoy your life. Take care guys, see you on the next one.